Greetings. My name is Aisha Shahida Simmons, and I'm honored to share my creative process for Highlander's Cultural Bazaar. I begin with libation, and instead of pouring water on dirt or plant, I'm going to speak words and read them. <clears throat> so I speak libation and pay homage to Africa, the birthplace of all of humanity. I speak libation and honor of the millions of kidnapped African men, women, and gender non-binary people and children who were forcibly relocated, trafficked, and enslaved throughout the Americas and the Caribbean. I pay homage to the Atlantic Ocean, where millions of Africans were shipped across in cargo, hundreds of thousands jumped over rather than face what was waiting. Hundreds of thousands of others were thrown over by barbaric uh, traitors of human bodies. And so I honor the Atlantic Ocean and all of the bones that rest in the bottom of that body of water. <clears throat> I speak libation in honor of the millions of indigenous men, women, gender non-binary people and children who were murdered, forcibly relocated, and in the process, their land was stolen. Their genocide and the enslavement of African people has yet to be fully recognized, and the atonement and accountability for these horrors is negligent at best. And I want to be clear that I am talking about Alaska over to Canada, throughout the United States to Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, throughout Chile and Argentina. There isn't any body of land in this hemisphere that hasn't been directly or indirectly impacted by the genocide of indigenous people, the theft of indigenous land, the legacy of enslavement of African people, the theft of resources from the continent of Africa, over 500 years of sustained white supremacist trauma and 500 years of continuous black and indigenous and people of color resistance and maintaining and transforming culture exemplifies this resistance. Ashe. I begin with the origins, my origins in this lifetime with my parents. I am 51 years old and an adult child of divorced activist parents, Gwendolyn Zahara Simmons and Michael Simmons, who for 55 continuous years and counting have been engaged in radical and revolutionary struggle. The photograph on the left is an image of my parents when they were together and I was a baby. Um, and while my father was serving a 30 month sentence for his refusal to participate in the wholesale murder of Vietnamese women, children, non-binary people and men under the guise of a war, uh, initiated by America, continued by America, started by France against the Vietnamese. And the picture on the right is of me as a toddler with my mother and father and my father's brother, Reginald Jeanette Simmons, who is an ancestor. He did two tours of duty in Vietnam, was a proud Green Beret and died from Agent Orange. Um, his body was, he was sprayed along with millions of others. Um, so that is, the origins in my lifetime. I also begin with Toni K. Bambara, who was my teacher. She was a black feminist writer, theorist, culture worker, filmmaker, and community organizer. And she said the role of the revol the role of the artist is to make revolution irresistible. And this photo was taken by Nikki Finney, poet laureate, activist um, in the late 70s. Toni taught many folks spanning generations, and Nikki was one of Tony's students. I feel honored to be a part of that continuum. And this next image is a Black lesbian feminist mother, warrior, poet, theorist, Audre Lorde, who said, we can learn to work and speak when we are afraid in the same way we have learned to work and speak when we are tired, for we have been socialized to respect fear more than our own needs for language and definition. And while we wait for that final luxury of fearlessness, the weight of that silence will choke us. And this photo was taken of Audrey in 1983. 
she, like Tony, our ancestors, but their legacies still live. And I share all of this background information because it creates the context for who I am and the work that I strive to do in the world. I do not create art art for art's sake. I'm a Black feminist, lesbian cultural worker who expresses my voice through the art of documentary filmmaking, writing, and activism, all of which are informed by my lived experiences as a child sexual abuse survivor, adult rape survivor, and Buddhist practitioner. So the slide, because my picture is covering my image slide, is saying, making visible the invisible. Um, I created and founded my company, Afro Les Productions, to use the moving image, the written and spoken word, to make visible the invisible by breaking silences enforced by white supremacy, patriarchy, and heterosexism. It is an Afro Les from Centric company, and Afro Les from Centric is a term I coined in 1990 to define the socially, socially conscious role of Black women who identify as Afrocentric, lesbian, and feminist. The context for the term emerged in the late 1980s after reading an Afrocentric text while in college and it stated that one can't be Afrocentric and homosexual because it was anti-family and by extension anti-African. And so as a form of resistance, of cultural resistance, I inserted the word les for lesbian and femme for feminist in between Afrocentric. So whether one believes that one can be Afrocentric or not, I know I am afro lesbian centric And that for me is an example of culture and resistance. Um, <clears throat> I believe in the power of storytelling to transform and ignite radical change. I began telling stories cinematically in the early 90s under the guidance of Tony K. Bambara at Scribe Video Center with my self-defined afro les from centric pen and camera. I wrote and directed my short video, Sounds Broken, in 1993 and in my father's house in 1996. They centered the experiences of my journey as a baby Black feminist dyke. They um, address race, gender, homophobia, rape, and reproductive justice and misogyny. And then I moved on or progressed um, to create Know the Rape Documentary, which is a groundbreaking feature length film that came out in, in 2006. It took me 12 years to make it and explores the international atrocity of rape and other forms of sexual assault committed against cis women and girls by cis men through the first person testimonies and scholarship and spirituality and activism and cultural work of Black people in the United States. No also explores how homophobia is used as a weapon of rape. No requires viewers to center Black women survivors' testimonies. And no, Black is woman and woman is Black. It took me 12 years, seven of which were full-time to make the film, and that was about economic censorship white supremacy under the guise of economic censorship. The crew was predominantly Black women. It is now translated into Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German, and all of that was done by Black women whose, that, whose language, their mother tongue was these languages. And that was very important for me in terms of the front matching the back too often. Too many folks who are not members of our communities are telling our stories. I mean, this has shifted radically um, over the past 20 years. Um, but in, when I started working um, in this work or continuing this work, and Lord knows there are many that precede me, that this was an ongoing battle. My next body of work is the anthology Love with Accountability, which won the Lambda Literary Award, but it, if, and it features transformative storytelling by 43 diasporic Black survivors and advocates who share testimonies and envision a world that disrupts and ends child sexual abuse without solely relying on the criminal justice system. For me, each of these works, Know and Love with Accountability, centers storytelling as a praxis for disrupting and ending sexual violence through an intersectional lens. Each work invites viewers to envision disrupting and ending these humane, inhumane acts humanely through the lived experiences and expertise of diasporic Black people. So we are following the visions and experiences of Black folks 
who have been brutalized by white supremacy and then brutalized again within our own communities and who are emerging thinking about ways, transformative justice ways, community accountability ways to respond, to hold people accountable, to center survivors, but to respond without relying on the very state that brutalizes us. This work takes its toll emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and physically. And at least for me, it's impossible to do by myself and it's important to do in community. And I lift up these two quotes from Lord and Bambara. I start with Bambara when she says, are you sure you wanna be well, sweetheart? Just so you sure, sweetheart, and ready to be healed. Cause wholeness is no trifling matter. A lot of weight when you're well. And Audre Lorde said, Without community, there is no liberation, but community must not mean a shedding of our differences nor the pathetic pretense that these differences do not exist. And for me, it's so important because we do this work in community. It is not about us being, as Audrey also has said, one big batch of homogenized chocolate milk that we bring all of our unique perspectives and experiences and visions and we figure out how to uh, move in harmony but still singing in our own key but finding a harmony that moves towards justice, accountability, love, peace. And for me, one of the ways in which I have been able to do that is through meditation, which for me is a radical call to action because it begins within. And I want to be clear that meditation does not mean passivity in response to injustice. It creates a space to develop razor sharp clarity about how to act humanely and compassionately. It means each moment to moment to moment to moment. I have an opportunity to not give my innate power away as a result of familial trauma or these vicious and atrocious forms of white supremacist, patriarchal, heterosexist, ableist, oddist, and other forms of oppression. So in order to go without, I have to tap within and it is, it's ongoing. It doesn't mean that it's like I'm I'm not Zen 24 seven. I have a lot of rage and anger and I'm learning how to trend, to acknowledge that rage, not deny it and transform it. And I, I know that my cultural work comes out of that, that my rage around sexual violence um, and, and my rage around white supremacy and how it plays a role in allowing the violence to occur, that being able to go within and to transform that rage through meditation and then action and healing. Um, and so for me, this work is about creating a world that I may not even see in this lifetime. I want to see it, but I may not. But thinking about the future generations with the affirmation that one day a generation will look back and say, y'all did this to each other? Y'all did this to us? That it is something that is that we look at that, that they don't even know or can't even imagine that it is a part of a history, but that it stopped and that they are living in a world without violence, living in a world with accountability and love. And that for me is part of my calling and commitment as a cultural worker. And it is one that I recognize that I am always in process and in progress. Um, and I thank you. And I say, Ashe, in peace. <laughs>